Well, greetings, party enthusiasts. This is Vicki Soma. I'm greeting you from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I am out of town this week, but I wanted to get a video out. Uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about designing and slicing for uh, multiple color prints on a single extruder machine. Now, there are a few ways to attack multicolor prints on a single extruder machine, and Sparky Face 5 actually highlighted three different techniques in a video series earlier this year. I'll go ahead and put a link down below to her different techniques. The technique I'm going to talk about today is uh, just taking advantage of the layer by layer by layer building nature of 3D printing. You know, it grows from the bottom up. And what I do is as these layers are printing, I can switch the filament colors. And so I can have different details that are at different heights of the print um, render out in a different color. If you looked at a cross section of one of my birds, say the Oriole, you could see on it how it starts off with the orange then goes to the white and then goes to the black so you can see how I'm building the layers up. You don't necessarily have to design your 3D model with multiple colors in mind. The gyro cube that I did like a pokeball, uh, that I didn't have uh, multiple colors in mind. I also have a gazebo that I originally designed thinking that it was always going to be white. But they are designs that I do think about the colors specifically when I'm making them from the get-go. With those items, you just sort of think ahead, you know, like what are the different colors that I want to incorporate into this design? I think I've done up to six colors in, in one project. Print. Uh, when I do the base model, I usually do it um, the base color like two millimeters th thick. And you know, I'm in a hurry, I'm impatient, so I usually do 0.25 millimeter layers. The two millimeters is just uh, something that I picked, and I saw that it's mostly kid proof. Like, if they're very determined, they can snap it, but for the most part, uh, the two millimeters gives, gives the piece a strength that allows it to survive my household. When I get to the actual detailing, my aesthetic preference is to keep the piece as flat as possible. And so at that point, I switch to 0 0.10 millimeter layers. How many layers do I do? It depends. Uh, my base is three layers. So a total of 0.3 millimeters high of um, my, that color detailing. There are exceptions to that. One exception is if I'm switching to a translucent filament over an opaque one, I might increase the height of that section just to make sure that we get a better coverage of that color. Another exception is if you have odd detailing, like the hummingbird, odd small shapes. Um, when you slice it, you can sometimes see in the slicing preview how the infill, the solid infill, is not going to go all the way on a certain section and cover it. And of course, there's settings you can tinker with. You can attack that a different way. But sometimes what I'll do is just increase that and give it another 0.10 millimeters height. So it'll be four layers uh, just to give it a little extra coverage for that color. And then a third exception is sometimes you can use the layer height to add detailing. Uh, an example here is the cardinal or the woodpecker. Uh, in those cases, the wings are matching the body itself, but the wings are still up just one layer higher. Even if you can't discern the 0.1 millimeter height, the printer will still do a, a perimeter. And that gives you a visual. It, it sets the wing apart from the rest of the print. When I am modeling these, a lot of the birds and you know the original designs I would do uh, in Blender, of course, I would pull in a background image or a, sometimes a hand sketch. I usually start with Bezier curves and outline the different sections like, oh, I'm going to do this little stripe. Oh, I'm going to do this eyeball. Oh, here's the body of the bird itself. Uh, I convert those all to meshes. I make them into faces and I simply extrude them to the heights that I want. Lately though, I've also been taking advantage of Inkscape. Uh, someone will send me a logo, I throw it into Inkscape, and it has the ability to trace paths based on colors. And then I can export those as SVG files. And they'll make, uh, when I pull it into Blender, there'll be a curve already set up uh, for every single color. And the best thing about it is it's already accounting for like that it has colors underneath it. So if it makes my, uh, you know, like I have my bottom layer, then I have my second color. Uh, that second color is also going to accommodate what's going to be my tippy top color at the top. 
my pieces, you know, each color is 0.3 millimeters high, that section, you can go even flatter. I would check out a man named Jonas Hansen. I've seen him on the Facebook groups and I've seen him on Twitter. And he's doing pieces with tool changes, which is very similar to one of the techniques Sparky Fice 5 does. And he just has these remarkably flat pieces. If flatness is something that you are looking for, then that may be a technique that you may want to try out and master. Now, you don't need Simplify 3D to do these kinds of prints. Uh, I did these kinds of prints without Simplify 3D for some time. And it just, basically, you watch your print and you come to the part where you want to pause and you pause and you do your manual, manual filament switch. Uh, this did lend itself to mishaps where you get a little bit distracted on the computer and you miss your switch point. Uh, it also made me not a very attentive mom because I'm like hovering over that printer just waiting for the switch point. I watched a video of Joel telling the 3D printing nerd in his early, early days probably when he just had uh, his subscriber count was in the hundreds and not the hundreds of thousands. And he, um, he showed me how you could use multiple processes in Simplify 3D for the colors. And this was just remarkable and it did uh, make me a much more attentive mother. Uh, with my multiple processes in Simplify 3D, I do pretty much I set up a process for every color. And if we take one of my birds as an example, the first color would be for two millimeters. Then I would switch to the next color and I would just do maybe 0.3 millimeters for that next, uh, next phase and then so on and so on. We, I do run these independently as separate prints. I do have custom starting and ending scripts for them. Very, very similar to where I'm embedding parts, where you see with the mirrors or the nuts with the tap handles. The deviations in my ending script of, you know, processes that I'm going to, you know, have another color afterwards. Uh, I do my relative mode, I lift the nozzle up, and then I also do an M107 call. Uh, M107 shuts off your cooling fan. I do this because there's not been one and not two maybe three occasions where I was switching filaments. Filaments slipped out of my hands, went right into the cooling fan and snapped a blade. So now that's my best practice, M107 whenever I'm doing filament switches. And then on my starting script of my subsequent colors, uh, what I do put in is a uh, purge nozzle code. And what I found there is it helps when you're starting those uh, subsequent layers, it helps to start the start laying down material right away. Uh, the downside is you do have to be attentive when you start that new print uh, to capture the oozed uh, filament as it comes out. There's been a couple times where I forget and it gets uh, embedded into my print itself. Well, that's today's episode. Thank you guys for watching and joining me here at the beach. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can comment down here at YouTube. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at TJW. I will also have a blog up on my 3D printing blog and that'll be at www.tjw.com. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.